Welcome to the third and final part of the Beginner's Guide to Composites. In the first and second videos, you've learned the basics of composites, understanding how they work, understanding what the, the terminology is, and you should have a pretty good idea now of what the basic layup techniques are. In this video, I'm going to walk you through your very first project. We're going to make a carbon fiber wallet. I'm going to demonstrate this with a starter kit from GorillaCarbons.com, but you can do this with any materials no matter where you get them from. Before we begin, let me make something very clear. If you're here because you want a carbon fiber wallet for cheaper than you can get someplace else, you're going to be disappointed. This video is not for you. But if you're the kind of person who wants to learn how to do something awesome, learn how to make things with your hands, you love working with your hands, and you want to learn how to make carbon fiber, real carbon fiber parts, then this is a great first project for you to start with. Let's get moving. Let's start by looking at what comes in a Gorilla Carbon's Easy Start Kit. There are a number of kits out there, but this is the most complete kit that I could find for under $100. For starters, you've got your epoxy and your hardener, a small blob of wax, and some carbon fiber. Inside the bag of goodies you have a brush, a couple of popsicle sticks, and four gloves, and a mixing cup which has convenient lines to help you mix your quantities. I chose this kit because of its completeness, but there are a couple of things that you should know about it. First of all, there's not a whole lot of carbon in it. It's only an 8 inch by 25 inch piece, which is enough for this project, plus enough extra to try again if you mess up. But do be aware that along the edges they have some tape stuck to it. That keeps the edges from fraying, which is really convenient, however it does mean that you can't use that last half to a quarter inch of the fabric. The other thing is that the cup has a little nub on the bottom which makes it so it doesn't sit flat. All I did was flip it over and use a knife to shave off that little nub and then it sat much much better. To get started you'll need your wax, some paper towels, and something to use as a mold. Really you just need a flat surface. I found some plexiglass lying around in my shop that works perfect for this. A sheet of glass from a picture frame would also work, or really anything that's flat and smooth. Just don't use your mom's kitchen counter. Start by using the paper towel to smear some wax onto your mold. Cover the entire surface of the mold with a thin layer of wax. Then use a clean dry part of your paper towel to buff the wax off. Then repeat this process two more times. I always like to start with at least three layers of wax on any brand new mold that I've never used before. You know it's sufficiently buffed when it's shiny and when the paper towel glides across the surface and it's really smooth. Now let's cut out our fabric. Use a credit card as a template to cut your plies out. You want to make sure that you've got an eighth to a quarter of an inch all the way around your card of extra fabric. This will get trimmed off later. Also make sure that you're not including the taped part of the fabric because the tape will prevent the plies from sticking to each other. I found that a rotary cutter is the easiest way to cut out dry fabric. You get clean, good cuts with it. However, it does not cut through the yellow Kevlar thread that's on the end of your fabric. For that, you'll need a pair of scissors. If there's any fibers that got missed when you were cutting with a rotary cutter, a pair of scissors will clean those up too. You can, however, use scissors if that's all you've got. Make your initial cut about an eighth to a quarter of an inch in, and then you can lift off your card and follow that same thread of the fabric all the way across. If the fabric distorts a little bit, you can very gently tug on the corners to square it off. Now we're ready for our layup. For your layup, you'll need your mold, a cup to measure epoxy, your epoxy and hardener, a popsicle stick for mixing, a pair of gloves, and a brush. Oh, and of course, your 10 plies of carbon. It's a good idea to stretch some plastic wrap across your workbench first and tape it down. That way any drips don't ruin your workbench. The cup's designed to make it easy to make the right mix ratios. You'll notice that this is a 2 to 1 resin, so we'll go to our 2 to 1 box. Fill up to the first one with resin and then add hardener up to the second one. Or you could measure it out manually if you want to use less resin. Make a mark between the 1 and the 2. Now you can fill up to the one with resin and fill up to the mark you made with hardener and you'll have two to one mix ratio. Or if you want to use even less resin, because really that's more than you need for this project, you can use a scale. A good rule of thumb is that for every gram of fabric that you're using, you'll want one to one and a half grams of mixed epoxy. I decided to mix 15 grams and it was almost not quite enough for this fabric. If you end up needing more, you can always mix more. So that meant measuring out 10 grams of epoxy and then adding hardener up until it reached 15 grams on the scale. 
use your popsicle stick to mix very thoroughly. I always mix for two minutes at least, just to make sure it's thoroughly mixed. One of the most common reasons for epoxy not setting properly is that it just wasn't mixed right. Now take the plastic off your brush and pull out any loose hairs because you don't want those getting into your layup. Very gently brush a layer of epoxy across your mold. You want to be careful to make sure that there are no bubbles on this layer because this is your surface layer and this is the layer that's going to determine how your carbon fiber looks. If there's bubbles in this, then you'll have bubbles in your final finish. I found that gentle, even strokes seem to work pretty well. You can lift it up in the light, and using the reflection you can see pretty clearly if there's any bubbles that you still need to work out. Alright, we're ready to put our first plies in the layup. Take a quick look on the back side of your fabric to make sure it's free of dust or any debris, because that will show up in your finish. Also, handle this fabric very, very gently, because it's very easy to fray the edges. Gently press the fabric in place. Once the fabric's in place, you can begin to brush the epoxy into the fabric. Start in the center and don't brush on the edges just yet. In fact, we're not going to brush the edges at all, because if you drag the brush across the edge, you could pull those fibers out and fray the edges. And then again, it doesn't look very good when you do that. Instead, what we do is we stipple the edges. Using the last quarter of an inch or so of the brush, very gently press the epoxy into the fabric and move all the way around the edge doing this. Now wet out the other side the same way you did the, the first. Now we're ready for our second ply. Gently press ply number two in place on both sides. and brush epoxy in the same way you did for the first ply. Make sure everything's thoroughly wet out before you put your next ply down. Lift it up to look at it in the light. Looking at the reflection, you'll see any dull spots in the fabric. Those are places that don't have any epoxy, and you'll need to brush a little bit more in them. With it all thoroughly saturated, you can go ahead and put down ply number three on both sides, and brush the epoxy in. Next is ply number four. And finally, ply number five. Take a good look at it, make sure everything's thoroughly wet out, and then pull some plastic over the top of it. And take a minute to smooth out all the bubbles that may be under the plastic. Go ahead and set a book on top of it. This will keep the plies from lifting while it cures, which sometimes does happen. See, didn't your teacher tell you that calculus would come in handy someday? Wait two full days for it to cure at 70 degrees Fahrenheit before removing the book. If the room's colder than about 65 degrees, it may never cure properly, so make sure it's warm enough. The nice thing about plexiglass is that you can flex it just a little bit and it'll crack the part free from the mold. Take a look at the finish. Not too bad. With parts fresh out of the mold, be really careful with the edges, because not only are they sharp and jagged, but if you run your finger along that, it'll cut you and leave carbon fiber splinters in your finger. You don't want that. With the mold side up, go ahead and place your credit card on top of it, and line it up so that the edges are parallel to the fibers on your plate. Use a marker to trace all the way around your credit card. Now what we'll do is we'll use masking tape and line it up with those lines and press it down onto your plate. Do that on all four sides. I found it was helpful to make the long sides a little bit short and then when I lined up my short sides I used a straight edge to trim those with a razor blade. 
that resulted in my masking job being very, very square and very even. Place one more piece of tape in the middle. This is going to protect the finish on your carbon fiber while you do all the cutting. Clamp your plate to a tabletop with two edges hanging over a corner. If you don't have clamps that have rubber shoes to protect your part, then place something soft between the clamp and your part so that it doesn't scratch the surface. Glue some 120 grit sandpaper to a block to make your own sanding block. And then with a vacuum cleaner running, sand down the edge till it's flush with your tape. For me to sand down this edge took me about one or two minutes. Vacuum up any excess dust and then move on to your next edge. If you'd like, you could use a Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel to make the job a little bit quicker. Trim it just outside the line and then use your sanding block to clean up the excess. You'll notice I'm wearing my other pair of gloves right now so I don't get my hands all itchy from the carbon fiber dust. Now remove your clamps and turn it 180 degrees to cut the other edges. and use the sanding block to clean up those edges. Now do the same thing with your other plate. To round the corners, I found it was easiest to lay my credit card on top and use that as a guide to round the corners just until they matched. Now flip it over so the masking tape is down and you're going to sand a 45 degree bevel on one of the long sides of your plate. So do this on both plates. Now when you put the two plates together, you'll see there's a small gap there. That'll make it easier to insert your cards later. Stack about 20 layers of masking tape on your sanding block and then glue a one inch wide strip of 120 grit sandpaper on top of that. And this will make our tool for beveling the edges where we're going to have our band. Now flip it over so the masking tape side is down. And use a ruler to measure and mark 9 16 of an inch from both sides. And then verify that the distance between your two marks is exactly one inch. Just like we did before, line up masking tape along those two lines we made and wrap it around to the other side. Now using your masking tape as a guide, very carefully drag your plate along that one inch wide strip of sandpaper that we made. Do this a few times to bevel that corner. Take some time and this should turn out really well. See how we beveled that corner just between the tapes? Do the same operation on both short ends of both of your plates. This will act as a guide to keep your band from sliding off of your wallet once it's complete. Once you're happy with both the bevels, go ahead and peel off the masking tape you just put on, but leave the rest of the masking tape on the face of your wallet because we're not quite done sanding. Now take a 3 quarter inch diameter dowel, or something about the same size that's round, and wrap some 120 grit sandpaper around it. Now take your two plates and make sure that the beveled edges that you created are on the same side with the masking tape out for both of them. Line them up carefully and clamp these to the edge of your workbench. Measure and mark the center of your wallet. And then use the dowel to trace a three quarter inch half circle around that center line. With the sandpaper wrapped around the dowel, begin sanding away that edge. To speed things up, you could use a Dremel tool with a drum sander. And just like we did before, use the Dremel to get it close, and then by hand, go ahead and finish that last little bit, sanding it right up to the line. I measured from both sides to make sure that mine was actually centered. 
Turns out I was off just a little bit, so I spent a little more time sanding. Now use your sanding block to round those corners. And now, last but not least, use some sandpaper, either the sanding block or just some that you're holding in your hand, to clean up any burrs or any extra splinters that are hanging off the ends. Make sure it's smooth because you don't want any splinters later. Vacuum everything up, and now you can begin to take off that masking tape. If you can find a 1 inch wide elastic band, that's perfect, but I chose to make my own. Here's what you'll need. Some double fold bias tape, or if you can find some thin leather or something else, that would work too. Some 1 inch wide elastic band, and some thread that matches your bias tape. We'll start with the elastic band. Use the scissors to square off the end if you need to. Now measure and cut a 6 inch length of the elastic. With the bias tape, you just need enough to wrap all the way around your elastic. Mine was about two and a quarter inches long. Here's what it's going to look like when you're finished. You'll have a loop of elastic, and where the two ends come together, you're going to wrap your bias tape around. We'll stitch that together so it holds tight. Backstitch a couple of times before you begin, and then stitch all the way across. Now with the needle down, turn the band 90 degrees. This is where I stuck the other end of my elastic in. When you get to the end, stop again with the needle down and rotate it 90 degrees one more time. And rotate it once more. When you get to the end, you're going to do a diagonal stitch across. This makes what's called a box stitch, which is very, very strong and should hold for the life of your wallet. Back stitch a couple of times and snip the thread. Now we'll make our diagonal stitch going the opposite direction. Again, don't forget to back stitch. Now we can clean up all the threads that are sticking out. Flip it inside out and do the same thing again. And there you have it, a finished band. That wasn't too hard. Now we can assemble the wallet. With the bevels we made on the inside of each of the plates, it makes it easy to pull the plates apart and stick all of your cards in. If you want to carry cash, fold it over and tuck it underneath the strap. The strap holds it securely so it doesn't fall out. And there you have it. I hope these videos have been immensely helpful to you. I'd love to hear about it if they have, or if there's things you think that I could improve on, I'd love to hear about that too, because I want to continually improve these videos. And if you tried this project, I would love to hear how your results worked out for you. I'd love to see some pictures. I'd love to, to hear any questions you have. Did you have any challenges that you ran into that I could maybe help you with? Feel free to send me an email at sasquatchcomposites at gmail.com. And be creative. Use the techniques that you've learned in this video to make other types of projects. Make keychains, car parts, whatever it is that you'd like to make, try it out and I'd love to hear how it worked out for you. Also, look down below the video where I've put links to all the materials that I used to make this project. 
including the Gorilla Carbon's Easy Start Kit. Now, like I said before, you could go buy a gallon of epoxy and a few yards of fabric and all the other materials and, do, and, and put together your own kit. And in the long run, if you're going to stick with this, you'll save money doing so. But this is a much lower upfront cost, and I have yet to find another kit that's as complete as this one for under $100, and this one's only $39. Bucks. And what's more, I had quite a bit of epoxy left over at the end of this, enough that I could buy a yard or two of fabric and I could make several more projects if I wanted to, and just buy some more fabric. So take a look at the links below, you'll find the link for this kit, you'll find the link for the other materials that were used in this video. Again, I hope this has been helpful for you, I hope you've enjoyed it, thank you so much for watching.